Mr. Kraft and the family starts at the top, but it also has to permeate throughout the organization. And I've always tried to carry that flag for the Kraft family. As he's told you, look, these guys went at a lot. They went at a lot. Um, and I love being here. I took a break. I went to Optum. I needed a break from Bill. I uh, went to Optum for about four years. And I came back. And one thing I came back with, I learned a lot at Optum. Larry Renfro, Mike Mateo, those guys. I learned a lot at, at Optum about diversity, right? About diversity and inclusion. And you better believe it, being the first black coach here in New England means a lot to me. Um, but those guys taught me, you have to take ideas from other people, black, white, green, yellow, really doesn't matter, old, young. One thing you'll notice about me in our interaction as we continue to go is I don't like echo chambers. I want people around me that are going to question my ideas or question the way we have done things in the past. Because realistically, this game's a lot different than when I, when I was drafted in 2008. At the same time, that's why I try to spend so much time in developing young men and young women so they know I don't want to teach them you know, what, what to think. I want to teach them how to think. And once we get to that point, I think we can get back to where we need to be at the top. And I'm an open book. I'm honored. I'm ready to go. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be the next head coach of the Patriots. We'll start with, uh, with Mike Reese here in the front row. This question is for Robert. Um, there's going to come a time um, when you have to turn in a draft card and make a pick official or make a signing official. Who will have the, the final say on those decisions? Yeah, you know, well, <clears throat> this is a day we want to celebrate. Gerard taking this position. Um, what we know, we have a lot of people internally who have had a chance to train and learn under the greatest coach of all time, and a man whose football intellect is very special. So, in the short term, we're looking for collaboration as our team has a tremendous opportunity to position itself right, given our salary cap space. And, you know, we've never drafted. In my 30 years of ownership, we've never been drafting as low as we're drafting. So we're counting on our internal people, um, whom we're still learning and... Uh, uh, evaluating. So we're going to let that evolve and develop. And before the key decisions have to be made, we will uh, appoint someone. And at the same time, we'll probably start doing interviews and looking at people from the outside. But my bias has always been in all our family companies to try to develop a culture from within where we understand uh, one another. I'll, I'll just give you a little factoid. Um, in the 30 years that we've owned the team today, so it's really 31, this is the third coach that our family has hired. In that period, there have been 244 coaches hired in the NFL, which means an average of roughly eight coaches per team, which means there's a turnover every three and a half years in the teams. We like to get continuity in our company, get the most competent people, and then try to build stability. And so before we just rush and hire people, we want to understand what we have internally. It's a long answer, but an important question. This question is for Gerard. Gerard, congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's been reported in recent days you've set up interviews for a defensive coordinator position and special teams coordinator position. I'm curious if you'll open a search for an offensive coordinator, and if so, 
what traits and experience will you prioritize? That's a great question. Um, I would say, just like Thunder alluded to, everything's still under consideration. Um, obviously, the staff that I've been working with isn't the staff that I've chosen. Uh, but everything's under evaluation. One thing I would say with all of my coaches, the number one thing is developing people. And with this generation, I mean, back when I first started playing, most of the time guys, you know, coach would say something and guys would do it. I think with this generation, it's about you have to show them that you care about them before you get into, you know, competency as far as X's and O's are concerned. And that's one thing I feel like with all my coaches, they should know the players. They should know the, the, their room better than I do. They're closer. Um, they're closer to those guys, and they have that day-to-day -day interaction. But to me, whether we're talking offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, all that stuff is under eval. And my number one thing is I want to bring in developers. Hi, Gerard. Uh, congratulations on, on the job. Just a, a thought on kind of following that up. Do you plan to officially name an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, special teams member? And what's your vision of what you want from this team, both offensively and what we've seen from you defensively? And will the Belichicks remain on the staff? That's like four questions in one. Sorry. <laughs> Only had one chance. That's, to about get four. All That's about four questions in one. Uh, the first one was what? What's the first question again? Break it down. Will you officially, will you officially right, name we coordinators? Uh, I think it's important. I think titles are important. And I know uh, no knock to Coach Belichick, who has been a huge mentor to me over the years as a player and as a colleague. What I would say is I believe titles are important, outward looking. But as far as in the building, I don't care what your title is. It's what's your job? What value do you bring to the organization? And I think that's the most important thing. And sometimes I think in business and sports, people get caught up in titles. But I also understand the other side. If you want to get, if you want to continue to get promoted, people have to know exactly what you do. But like I said earlier, in, inside, it's all about collaboration. That's what Thunder talked about, and that's what I'm about as well. Hey, Gerard, <clears throat> um, what's the difficulty? of replacing the greatest coach of all time and filling those shoes and you know honoring and keeping the DNA that he infused and altering it in the ways that you see fit. Yeah. You know, there this organization has had a lot of success over the years for a long time. And there have been many teams that, you know, they have one good year and then they're out for three years. One thing I learned from coaches and from from Thunder is about just surrounding yourself with good people. Right, surround yourself with good people. Now, as far as our staff and, and things like that, we're going to be good. We're going to be a lot better. Now, Bill always says this, managing expectations. For me, I'm not trying to be Bill. I'm not trying to be Bill. I think that Bill is his own man. Uh, if you can't tell by now, I'm a little bit different even up here. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, the more I think about the more I think about, like, the lessons that I've taken from Bill, hard work works, right? Hard work works, and, and that's what we're all about. Hey, Gerard, good to see you here, over here. Oh, over Devin. Here. Yeah, good to see you. Ha have you taken the time, I know, obviously, a huge opportunity, uh, and everyone wants to, you know, who's the coordinators, who's this, X's and O's. But have you had the opportunity just to celebrate with your family and really soak in the opportunity being the first black coach? All of the lessons you've learned being here, have you had that opportunity to just take, whether it's a night, 10 minutes, to really kind of enjoy and take on what you're about to do next? I haven't had that opportunity, but we're turning up tonight, back to work tomorrow. Right, I'll hang out with you. <laughs> Gerard, you've had the chance to Gerard, you've had the chance to play for a number of different head coaches over the course of your playing career, uh, including Bill. You referenced Bill. I I'm curious, do you have another couple of coaches that you're going to kind of take their philosophy and kind of apply it here and apply it here? Where, what have you learned from those guys over the course of your playing career? Yeah, the, the one thing I will say is philosophy is interesting, especially if you're talking about X's and O's. We've always been a game plan team, whether offense, defense, or special teams. Our philosophy has to be flexible. 
Well, one thing I will say, like, you know, we're talking about on the field philosophy, philosophy, but there's also a philosophy in the building, right, in the building, like what you want out of the people who are really leading the team. One thing I, I believe in, I don't, when I talk about leadership, most people think it's like a chessboard and a guy moving pieces on the board. I really don't uh, believe that to be correct as far as developing leaders. I think of it more as gardening, right? Gardeners really don't, they don't grow anything. They just make sure the soil is right. They, they grab the weeds out there. They water it every day and whatever grows, grows. And that's how I approach leadership. I don't want to be, and, and we talked about it before, but collaboration is huge. I want to just water seeds. And right now we're in the evaluation process where we are planting seeds, right? We are planting seeds and hopefully uh, that will lead to the next dynasty here with the Kraft family. Hey, if you're just joining us here on CBS Sports HQ, Gerard Mayo being introduced officially as the new head coach of the New England Patriots, saying my calling is to be a teacher and to develop people. He is now the youngest active head coach in the NFL at 37 years old, just beating Sean McVay by about 30 days to get that title, the youngest active head coach of the NFL. He also said, hey, I'm not trying to be Bill, but a lesson he took away from Bill Belichick is that hard work works.